praise the Lord higher, 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 higher. Lift up Jesus higher. Praise the Lord. I'm Evangelist Andrew Man. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here mightily in our midst. Heal the sick. Let the blind eye see. Let the deaf hear. Let the lame walk. Let the, let the poor be rich. Let the good news be preached to the poor. And let the prisoners be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Let this be the year of the Lord's favor. Today we are reading from the book of St. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Jesus healed a man born blind. Verse 6. Jesus, after he said this, verse 5, John chapter 9, verse 5 says, Jesus says, I am, while I am in the word, I am the light of the word. After he said this, Jesus spat on the ground and made some mud with spittle. He made mud with his spittle, with his spit, and he rubbed the mud on the blind man's eyes and said, Go and wash your face in the pool of Siloam. The name means sin. So the man went, washed his face, and came back seeing his neighbors then. And the people who had seen him begging before this asked, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, He is the one. But others said, No, he isn't. He just looks like him. So the man himself said, I am the man. How is it that you can now see? They asked him. He answered, The man called Jesus made some mud, rub it on my eyes, and told me to go and to Shalom and wash my face. So I went, and as soon as I washed, I could see. Where is he? They asked. I don't know, he answered. Amen. Holy Spirit, come and anoint me and help me to explain this gospel to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Today is the 19th of December, 2022. It's winter time in London, England. Uh, we are blessed to be here. We are from the Chelsea Black Church. In this story we just read St. John, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus made mud with his spit. He rubbed it on, the, on he rubbed his finger there and put the mud in the blind man's eye. He told him, go to the swimming pool, wash your face. The man went, wash his face. And he came back seeing the neighbors saw him and said, Oh, isn't this the man who was born blind? How can he can how can he can see? And the man said, Jesus made a mud and he put it on my eye. Well, to cut a long story short, that that experiment, that method Jesus used to heal the blind man, is a Moors, so African method of healing people. The Moors were dark skinned West African, according to the dictionary. This is the Oxford English Dictionary. I attended the University of Oxford. I studied politics and the environment. There was someone in my class like Rajiv Shunak, the current prime minister. He was in my class. I have a diploma from Oxford. So this Oxford Dictionary tells us that the more is a dark-skinned West African like me. St. Morris was a dark-skinned West African he, he, was, he is the patron saint of Germany. He captured the spear that, that killed Jesus from the European and he brought it to Germany. They made him the patron saint. He's a more black-skinned man. St. George's is a dark-skinned African. He killed a dragon while he was on his horse going to church. A dragon attacked him and he plunged the dragon with his spear. He killed the dragon. So the British, the English man made St. George's a black Ethiopian. The, the, the patron saint of England. We celebrate his birthday May every year, May Bank Holiday, St. George's Day. St. Patrick's is another black man. He was a slave. His master threw him overboard and, and he fell on the beach of Ireland. He got up and preached the gospel, the Irish belief. So all over Europe, the, the, the kings of Europe, Europe there, the seal is a black person, black man with a crown, a black king with a crown on his head. I'll show you in Morris' picture here, the link. Anyway, so Jesus made that part, uh, that mud, he put on the blind man's eye, and the blind, blind man could see. 
I'm here to tell you that's a moral way of healing people. A dark skin West African philosophers heal like that. Jesus studied in Africa. He lived in Africa from the day he was born till he was a teenager before the, the, the parents brought him back to uh, Nazareth in Israel. So, more science goes like this. If you are sick, for instance, you have a tumor in your stomach, or you have a chest pain, or you have uh, arthritis, or you have cancer. If you go to a mall to heal you, you say, you say, what's your problem? You say, oh, you have two more in your stomach, you have pain. He will write Bible script. Now, most were, they were not Muslims. They were dark-skinned African. This was long before the, the, the Arabs came to, 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 to do. If you go in any African village, ask them for more men. They will take you to a, the darkest-skinned men in that town. It's a mall. So the more we write, when you go to him, he say you have, for example, you have back pain, two more, you're sick. He will write the Bible verse on a slate uh, called Wale. And he will use an ink called Lubi. The Lubi is an ink they got from the mango tree or from some fruit tree. So it's edible. The ink will not kill you. Unlike the ink in London, which is poisonous. And anyway, he will write the Bible verse, by the stripe of Jesus we are healed. He took our infirmity and carried our diseases. I'm the Lord that he led the Deuteronomy. All of that Bible verse, the, the, the more men will, will write down a slate. He will write the Bible verse on a slate. And, and this is water. He will wash the slate with some water. He will wash the slate and the ink will come in that water. The ink will come in the water. And the more we put that water, for example... In a jar, you put the water in a jar like this, in a bottle, and he'll give you that bottle of water, for example, like this. He'll say, take it home in the morning, you drink some, so the word of God is in that water. The, the word of God will go in your stomach, then you rub some of that on your face or in your hair. The word of God is rubbing your hair. Rubbing your on your face. This is the word of God in that water. You rub it on your hand. Then you go out to work. You do that for one week. You drink the word of God. The word of God will attack the sickness that's in your body. And within two or three days, it will, the sickness will evaporate. There's power in the word of God. So he said, the more put the word of God above everything else. They were not Muslims. A famous more. Uh, in, in Chelsea there, Sir John Moore, he owned the whole, he built Chelsea. Chelsea belonged to Sir John Moore. John Moore was the ambassador, uh, Henry VIII ambassador to Rome, to the city of Rome. He was not a Muslim. He was the advisor to Henry, uh, King Henry VIII of England, John Moore. One of Henry VIII's wives, Genesee, the Moore. Genesee is a name which means paradise. Say is a name for uh, Gola people, Mende people, Pele people, Vai people, uh, Gisi people. They, these are all native tribes. The, the last name is Say, S E Y. So King Henry VIII's wife is called Genesee. The English book called Jane Say. But she's a Moor, so they say Jane Say the Moor. Jane Say Moor. You, you understand what I'm saying? Her name is Jane Paradise Say, which is her African name. Then her complexion is more. So they combine all of that and call her Jane Say More. But Say More is not a name, it's the judge describing her skin. Her brother, uh, the Duke of Somerset, the Earl of Somerset, Lawrence Say More, he built the, 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 the he built Somerset House. That was the first European Union headquarters, the ambassador of Spain, England, uh, the, this. Germany, uh, France, they will meet there and discuss European Union, okay? So that man, Lawrence Seymour, was the, the, the Navy commander for King Henry VIII. He joined Scotland to England to form Great Britain. He, he invented that word, Great Britain. He was the advisor to King Henry VIII. He's a black man or more, a Christian. I'll show you the, the, the seal, the badge of that, the Seymour uh, 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 Family, I'll show you the badge. So black West African. Uh, Oliver Cromwell is also a black man. 
His, his mother is the younger sister of Jane Seymour, Jane Genesee the Moor, who was married to King Henry VIII. Her younger sister, or, or Margaret, she married the elder Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell's father. And Cromwell was born, he, that's how close he is to the throne of England. That's why Cromwell started fighting. He actually, he, he was fighting for his auntie. His auntie was the queen of England, okay? So these are the Moors that ruled England. Henry Moore was the, uh, he's in Chelsea. He's the advisor, the ambassador in England, ambassador to Rome. Every time King Henry VIII wants to get married, he would send Sir Henry Moore to, to the Pope in Rome to get the marriage certificate from him. Are you listening to me? So these are the Moors that, that rule England. And their way of healing people were through the word of God written on a, on a slate. A slate is a wooden board, a, a piece of wood, maybe uh, two feet by uh, four feet long. They will write the scripture. Whatever ailment is on you, today the church pray for you. They put their hand there. Oh, in the name of Jesus, be healed. But the more will not do that. He will write the scripture on that piece of, of, of slate, on a piece of wood. And wash this and wash the ink from the wood with water. You wash the ink with water, then the word of God will come in the in the water. Are you listening to me? Now you, the more we take that water and pull it in a bottle and give it to the patient. The same way you go to the hospital, the, 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 the doctor put the medicine in the jar and give it to you. He said, Go and take this cough syrup. Take tea, two teaspoons a day for your constipation or for your chest. The more invented that method of medicine. But instead of medicine, they were using the word of God written on a piece of plank, on a piece of board with ink. The ink is made from mango tree or some fruit tree, so you can eat the ink. It's not poisonous. Then they'll wash, they'll wash that piece of board with the, the ink from the board with water. So the ink will come in the water. Remember now, the ink is the word of God. Are you listening to me? It's almost like if you dissolve your Bible in the water and you drink that water, the, the Bible verse will be in the water. But this is how the more heal people. So in John chapter 9, we see here, John chapter 9, says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. Now, you have to remember, Jesus is a more now, you see? Let me just make a plan here. When we say more, we're not talking about secret society or cult and because they have put all kind of secret society around the more. It's not secret society. These were just plain, educated Africans who, who moved to Europe and they ruled Europe for like 500 years before the, the, the albino, blonde hair Anglo-Saxons came, okay? This is how the more heal people. And Jesus studied in Africa. He's using the African method of healing. He took a mud. He said, Jesus saw a man born blind. His disciple asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents. People will always blame you for things. They say, oh, this man must be... And religious people do that. They accuse the man of sinning. That's why he was born blind. The man is not even born yet. How can he sin? Or whether his mother sinned or his parents. Slavery. The excuse for slavery was, oh, these slaves are sinners. Their parents sin. That's why they are slaves. But it's not like that. Jesus said, nobody sinned. It's not his parents. It is not him. He is born blind. His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents' sin. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. As long as it is day, we must keep on doing the work of him who sent me. Because night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the word, I am the light of the word. After this, after Jesus said this, he spat on the ground. Pui! Pui! He 
spat on the ground and made some mud with the spittle, the saliva. He made some mud with the saliva. Now, this is African method of healing. He rubbed the mud on the man's eyes and said, Go and wash your face in the pool of Siloam. Siloam, the name means scent. So the man went, washed his face, and he came back seeing. This is more science. These are more doctors. Moorish doctors heal people like that. I bear witness to so many Moorish doctors healing. I, I went to do some... Um, Farm or some gardening, and I cut my foot with the with the uh, garden tool right on my ankle. The garden tool bounced on my ankle bone, and I think it affected my left vein on my bone. So I went to the hospital. They they treated me. Every day they'll give me injection. My foot was still swollen. So an old lady saw me. Said, "What's wrong with your foot?" I said, oh, it's swollen. She said, "Wait for me." She went in her garden, picked out some leaves maybe potato leaves whatever she boiled them and squ squeezed the hot water on my foot in two days my foot was better to normal hallelujah are you listening to me that's a moral science they use leaves they not wish doctors no no they, the white men made you to believe that the moors are wish doctor they are not wish doctor the crew tribe they were sailors they live in liverpool manchester and uh, wales and scotland the best African sailor, they are Moors, okay? They use the pepper to heal all sickness. If you have a cold, they cook pepper soup, you eat it, or they take a, put pepper in the water, and take a teaspoon of pepper and put it in your nose. You will sneeze, Phew! all the cold will leave you. If the person has constipation, they put some uh, pepper in the water and, and get a plunger. A plunger is something you get from the chemist. It's about a rubber, rubber ball with a hole in there and a, and a piece of stick. They put that, they will squeeze it in the bowl of pepper water and will fill that plunger. They pull it in the person's backside and squeeze it. That pepper water will go in the intestine. When they pull it out, the person will go to the bathroom and, and flush everything out. So whatever sickness is in your body, in your intestine, you flush everything out in two minutes. No constipation. No cancer, nothing in your stomach. You flush it all out in two minutes. That's more, more science. I had, um, during the winter, the cold would in my throat. I cannot swallow my spit. I can't swallow food. It's difficult for me to breathe. A more old woman, she, she, she said, Andre, what's, what's the matter? I said, oh, 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 my throat. There's a, a blister in my throat or a, a, a boil in my throat. She said, wait for me. She got some pepper. Dry pepper, pepper, she mash, grind it, put some water in it, and take the pepper paste. She said, I'm open my, open my mouth with her finger. She put the pepper paste in my throat and rub it on that tumor. And the tumor burst open. All the, the bad blood came out. My throat was open. I could drink water. I could eat. I could swallow my spit. You understand what I'm saying? That's more science without going to the doctor. So, a lot of people get healed like this. How many of you know the Olympics? You, you people who run the Olympics. When they were doing the Olympics, one girl was running the female Olympics, and they were doing high jump where you jump in the sand and you you like a broad jump. She jumped in the sand about six feet. When she landed, she landed on her thigh bone, and both her thigh bone broke. Her foot, they took her to the hospital that evening. Her foot became swollen like, like uh, big as this. The doctor said they had to amputate her. So her parents said no. They took her to a more man, a dark skin West African. He made some chalk. He made, he, he rubbed it on her, on her thigh. Her thigh bone broke. Both thigh bone broke into three places. The more doctor, black West African, made some mud. And, and leaves, and rub it and make and chalk. He rub that chalk on her thigh bone and stretch it. After two months, her feet became strong, all her bone joined together. Just by rubbing the mud, the clay on her thigh bone. This is more science. This is not wish doctor. These are just ancient uh, philosophers that, that passed down these healing methods to through the generation 
So when you see Jesus, any African read that, who is familiar with more method of healing, you see Jesus make the mud with his spit and rub you on the blind man's eye and tell him, go and wash your face in the swimming pool, come back, and the man could see. That's a moral science. That's common. That's common thing in, 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 in Africa. It's not wish doctor. This is ancient knowledge passed down from the elders going way back to Abraham time. Abraham went to Africa, he met those Moors then. You know what I'm saying? The more the thing I want to correct is the more it's not an Arab. The Arabs came to Africa recently. Okay? The more the Africans been doing their, their, their traditional practice long before the Arab in um, religion was invented. The more is not of uh, Arab. The Arab in Africa is called Labwi, which means Arab. The, 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 the natives were calling Labwi Arab. But your more they're calling more men, more men, more men. If you go to Africa in Iceland, can you take me to a more man's house? They wouldn't be carrying you to an Arab. They'll carry to all the darkest skin was African men. That's they'll take you to his house. He's the more. Okay, so correct that. And the second correction I want to make is this: the more uh, doctor is not a cult. It's not a secret society where they go and rub, rub, tie black cloth on people's face at night to join. No, it's not like that. If you see somebody doing that, they, 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 people in the Western world, they hijack the more name and they want to do evil using the more. The more is a harmless philosopher. All he has is books. Okay? He's not a cult leader. He's not a secret society. I'll give you one more method of more healing. Are you enjoying this? Amen. There's something called tonsil, tonsillitis or whatever it is. During the winter, when it's cold, black people get affected. They have little uh, hard thing like a cherry, the size of a cherry bowl, cherry fruit, under their chin, under their chin bone here. If you don't do operation, remove that, it, it, it gives you fever and all of that, you know, it, it can be difficult for you. So the more science, let me tell you how the more we do that. The more we take a pen knife, Pull it over a cigarette lighter or fire coal and heat that night off. Heat it off, up, and grab that little uh, thing as big as a cherry and split it open and get that uh, fall in his hand like a cherry. The thing that is troubling you. Okay, he rubs some oil there. After two days, that's so better. That thing is gone forever. Are you listening to me? That's more method of healing. This is. Uh, outdoor operation without going to the hospital. He do, he do it right there. You sit down by the house of the, by the house. He do it for you. In two minutes, it's gone. More can perform circumcision. Okay, if you have a say, you had a, a, a cut on your body, and this or you, like a mark or cut on your face. You are playing football or sport, and you got a cut on your body, but it got healed, and then they. They, 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 they got here, but your skin is showing, the, the, the scar is showing, it's, it's, it's raised up like a, like a bubble. Where more science can get rid of that scar in one day. What do they do? The more will take an empty whiskey bottle. He light a matches and drop it in that bottle. And, uh, and then he put his hand there like this. In there, you will see a cloud or a or, or white cloud. The whole thing will become white cloud. And he'll, he'll put that bottle on, on top of the sole and leave it there. It, it, the bottle will stick on top of the, the scar like this. For five minutes, what's happening, the bottle will be drawing the bad blood that is held under the scar that is making it to raise up. The, all that bad blood will... It, it will draw it gradually and pull it in the bottle. And then when they take the bottle, your hand will be smooth and flat. There will be no scar there. Are you listening to me? These are all more... I'm, I'm not saying this. I read it in a book. I, I saw this in real life. Okay? Now, I got one more testimony. Oh, there's a man who got mad. The man got mad. It was just like group of students, you know, going around doing the thing. So he got mad during the exam time. 
His parents took him to a mall man. One, uh, about three, four months later, the man came back sound in his right mind. He, he even had a, a drama group that used to perform drama plays and at a theater. In his right mind. He had about 500 people in that drama club. They would travel through different theater, maybe Queen Vic Theater, Churchill Theater, and Bath and other. They and perform their, their, their dance and their drama and that. You understand what I'm saying? He was totally healed. That is more uh, science. Are you listening to me? It's no wish. It's not no. They say, oh, wish, doctor. That's a lie. The white men don't want you to believe your own culture. But again, I'll keep saying. Please don't let anyone deceive you that morals were society people, secret cult or secret society. If they tell you that, that's not more. People in the Western Hemisphere will want to align their secret cult with the moral, but the morals are not secret society people. They are ordinary philosophers. Learned, these are the, the, the professors in the African, traditional African setting. They are morals, okay? So if somebody say somebody come from the West Africa, for example, Canada or Caribbean, say, oh, the Moors, the Moors will do this at midnight, they rub black clothes on your face. That's a lie. I know real Moors, they don't rub black clothes on their face at midnight. That's a lie. Okay? Now, how does God provide the need of the Moors? Since he's a scholar, he doesn't go to a nine to five job. If a, then we live in Brixton, South London. If a moral come here, if a moral come to South London, for example, uh, say he's a friend of the, the landlord, they will give him a room, a flat. He will put his mat down, get his books, his Bible and other books, literature, philosophy. You get those books, pull on the mat. He will sit there and pray. He will fast for three days without. Put an announcement in the newspaper. Oh, the great Moor has come here. Come here, get your blessing. None of that. He just fasts for three days. And then he, he waits. People will begin to come from over Brixton. Some of them will go to McDonald's or they go to KFC. They buy a bucket of chicken. Hello, is the Moor here? Yes, yeah, the man of God here. Yeah. Well, we brought you some dinner. Yes, a, a, a box of fried chicken. Somebody will go to... Uh, so the baby in nice bridge, the food is 150 pounds of plate. They'll buy and bring it for the moral. Mor, what's the happening? The moral say, Oh, I want to get married, I can't get a husband. She will say, The moral say, Okay, uh, yeah. She, he will look in the Bible and find scripture like Rachel married uh, Jacob and, and Isaac married Rebecca. He'll write all the scripture and he pull in the in with the ink. Then he wash the, 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 the slate with water. And the ink is in that water. He put that water in the bottle and give it to the woman. Even if she's barren, she can't give birth. That like the Bible, the, the barren woman in the Bible, said so God make the barren woman to God to give birth. He write that scripture, pull in the water, wash it, and give it to the woman. And tell her in the morning, you take one tablespoon of this uh, water with the word of God. Do you understand? She will take one tablespoon in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night before she go to bed. She will also rub some of that word of God on her face, in her hair, and rub some on her stomach. Are you listening to me? Then she go and sleep with her husband. 